Okay. Well, good evening, everybody. My name is Cheryl Rigger, and I work at the Dover Public Library. I arrange programs for the uh, adult section of the library. And uh, if you have uh, topics of interest that you would like to hear more about, uh, please let me know, and I will try to find a speaker or someone with more knowledge than I have about it. And uh, we will uh, uh, find someone to uh, give us a presentation about that. Now, tonight's presentation is called Making History Accessible Through Storytelling, The New Carriage Collaboration. So in one moment, I will be introducing our, our guest speakers. And meanwhile, let me just catch you up on some of the um, things going on here at the library. So you know that you can go to our Facebook page and to our uh, website. And if you go into the library, you can see posters of all the programs that are up and coming at the library. Um, we during the pandemic, we've had uh, about a program a week. So we are still trying to meet, even though it's on Zoom, um, just so that people can still participate in activities and learn something new while we uh, make adjustments to this uh, to the pandemic. So on Thursday of this week, Shanna Angel from the Farm Bureau is going to talk about how Tuscarawas County farmers were affected by the COVID-19. Uh, in their agricultural practices and their, their businesses. On the 25th, which is next Tuesday, Chris Hart is going to do a Facebook Live portrayal of um, one of the people who served at Fort Sumter. His program is called First Shot. So Fort Sumter is where the first shot of the American Civil War was fired. So Chris is going to do that on Facebook Live. Then on Thursday of the last week of um, May, Alan Ladd from Akron is going to talk about his newest book uh, called Churchill's Secret Messenger. It's a World War II spy novel about the Special Operations Forces in Great Britain. Really a well-written book. Uh, it's a page turner because at the end of every chapter, he leaves you with the key of what you want to hear about in the next chapter. So it's really great. And then on Monday, the 7th of June, um, a man named Doug Lockhart, who is a blacksmith, is going to join us to tell us about his family-owned business uh, in blacksmithing. And that will be very, very interesting, I promise. And then finally, on the 12th of June, a Saturday, we're going to have our very first in-person paint night. So that's an exciting thing coming up. Um, I will tell you that we are recording this program tonight and the recording will be available on the Dover Public Library website for one month. I'll probably upload it tomorrow. All right. Uh, if you have questions or comments, you can either put them in the chat or you can save them till the end of the program and we will gladly talk about anything you uh, want to know. So now I'm going to uh, introduce our speakers tonight. Um, Tam Benson, uh, I'm not going to do much of the in, uh, introduction because I'm going to ask the ladies to introduce themselves and tell how they got involved in this project called the New Carriage Collaboration. And so we have Tam Benson and we have Anastasia Merritt. And Tam wrote the book, the text to the book, and Anastasia illustrated it. So that is where we are. So ladies, the program is yours. Like I say, please tell us a little bit more about yourself and how you got involved in this project. Okay, <laughs> so I'm Tamara Benson. I'm the assistant curator at Reuse Museum in Dover. And um, also I teach English at Kent, uh, Kent State here at Kent Tusk. Uh, how did I get involved in the project? Is that what she wanted to know? How so. we got involved in the, okay. So <laughs> we have a, mascot at Reeves and uh, we're constantly trying to make our, our programs accessible, trying to figure out what we can do to get children involved and young families. We have, we have a large number of young families who, um, you know, with young children is kind of hard. I mean, you've got, uh, she's what, seven? 10. 10, <laughs> she's seven. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, 10 year old. So trying to get them involved and interested in a Victorian house is, you know, not always, uh, not always easy. So the museum has a mascot, Jeeves the horse, and he'd go out and do events and, and what have you. But um, we were just trying to figure out a way to use him to get more young kids involved. 
Um, so that's how this kind of started. Anastasia? Um, I, uh, I illustrated the book. Um, that's, I think that's the first time I've ever been to the Reeves Museum was when they asked me to illustrate the book. And so I got to go over and um, do the tour and everything. And um, I just, I think it's good to push history through books because I know a lot of the history that um, I've learned about in my life has come through books. And so I'm excited that we can kind of share that with kids and especially local history, which I think sometimes gets overlooked so easily, you know, over the bigger markers in history. So it's nice to be able to push something local that has a historical aspect and try to get kids to learn. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to share my screen just to get us started. Uh, let's see here. I hope I can do this correctly. Um, no, that didn't work. Hang on here, let me find it. I'm not very good at this. Usually the other people share their screen. Okay, now it looks like we're cooking. So, um, so our uh, program today is called Making History Accessible Through Storytelling, the New Carriage Collaboration. So, oh, that is not what I wanted. I wanted this one. <laughs> okay, so I'm just showing on this screen. What I'm going to do is let me show you the first two screens and then Tam can talk about them. So on this first screen, Tam sent me, this is what it looks like when she writes the text for the, the book. And so she puts the page number and she puts the text. All right, that's pretty straightforward. Then on her next uh, thing that she sent me, the next step in her process is that she let um, spaces, she had the layout of the page as she envisioned it, and she left spaces so that uh, Anastasia could see what space she had to fill with, uh, you know, how big of a space she had to fill, and also what the text was that she was going to be illustrating. All right, and so you can see at the top of the page, in parentheses, Tam left a note for uh, Anastasia, carriage under the tree, Jenny's by the pond, Jean, Jeeves is munching grass. So, you know, there, that's the first part of the collaboration that we can see. All right, so I'm going to stop sharing the screen now. And Tam is going to talk about her process, her writing process in this whole thing. Okay. Yes. Are you going? Yes. So now. Page where you can see us or. Okay, all right. So I'm seeing something different on my screen. That's fine. Um, so, so the writing process for me is uh, is kind of interesting. I'm not I'm not a children's author. Um, this is the very first time I've ever tried to write something uh, for children. I write other things, lots of other things. I write the murder mysteries for our our uh, museum and for other people and, and lots of stuff like that. So adult kind of stuff. But um, but like I said, because we have this mascot and we really wanted to try to reach families with younger children and, and try and do a lot with that. Um, we took the mascot who one of our, our, our um, social media coordinator, Cammie, usually dresses up in the costume and had been for about a year before, um, before this idea kind of hit. So we had that and then we had a little stuffed horse that we sold in the gift shop. Um, so we kind of had an idea of what Jesus was going to look like in our head talked about the book and the theme of the book had to pick out, you know, a theme that kids would relate to. So we went with the idea of like uh, cooperation. Um, so Jeeves and Jenny have to co cooperate to get something done in, in the first book that, that we wrote. Um, yeah, so, so at that point, we, so we had kind of a general idea. The first, the first page that you showed with the, the, just the Word document with everything kind of, um, that, that was the first book. Um, and I learned after that first book that I don't, I need to see things, um, actually need to see them kind of in a book form. So that first, the first time we did it, I just typed up the words and then sent that document to Anastasia, Anastasia. So she saw it just like you saw it with, you know, page one, one and two, these are the words. And then she did everything, um, which she'll talk about, but 
I'm not the, I'm like the kind of person I, I need to see visually what it looks like. So the second one, the second page that you showed, the idea with having the, like the open space, um, that was for my benefit. Anastasia doesn't need my help. She knows what she's doing. She knows how to, how to do what she does, but I needed to have it, you know, I needed to have it in um, landscape, like it was going to be a book form. Um, literally had to staple the pages together. So I was holding it like it was a book the way I would see it. Um, I would put in the blank space, there were a couple of places because the second book is, um, the first book was about cooperation and Jews and Jenny working together. And the second book that I, I just finished and we handed off to Anastasia is about Jeeves traveling back, traveling to Wales with a dragon, which is super cool because the family has, um, the family's Welsh, so they come from Wales. Uh, so there are a lot of things that Jeeves does in the book and lots of places that he visits that um, I knew Anastasia probably wouldn't be familiar with. So I went online, picked up some, and just pulled some images off of the internet and kind of plonked them on the pages. So she had kind of a starting point for research so she could use that and then go look, mm -hmm. look up other things. Um, certainly not, like those were not the images I wanted her to use. It's just like, here's an idea of where to go from here. But um, so I found after the first book that I'm a much more, like I need, I don't know if I'm a, like a visual kind of person, I guess it is, which I didn't think I was, I'm more wordy, but I really needed to hold it um, and see how it was kind of going to look eventually. Um, so yeah, the writing was sadly not, I'd like to say it was hard, but, and I really had to, you know, it, it wasn't that hard. Um, my part was not the difficult part. Um, <clears throat> so after I did that and made it into a Word document, either way, um, I then handed it off to Anastasia, who I'll let you talk about your process because I'm sure it's way more interesting than mine. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, my I don't feel like there's a lot to the process. It's very helpful to have um, the layout and the landscape layout that that actually does kind of help mm -hmm. me kind of, you know, to see, OK, well, this is what they want for this illustration. So that helps. And then, um, like I said, with the first book, because I'd always heard about the Reeves Museum and my parents had always talked about going, but for whatever reason growing up, like we went to Schönbrunn and places like that, but we never made it over to the Reeves Museum. So when they asked me to do the book, the first thing I said is, well, I'm gonna have to come over and like see the place <laughs> and, you know, to kind of just get a feel of it. So um, yeah, so we did that and kind of got, you know, a, a feel for the house and the, um, gardens and like the carriage house and stuff, which is where most of the first book takes place. And then um, probably what was most helpful was like pictures of the family, um, because you want to try to stay true to what the family would have looked like. And uh, I don't know, that's important to me. And um, just, you know, I guess illustrating it, um, like I said, I'm, I'm a big history learner through reading. And I definitely think like there could even be more um, illustrated books for kids um, about history to try to get kids interested in it. And um, where was I going with this? <laughs> um, but just trying to think, I guess, like as I was illustrating it, of, I guess some of the books um, or like the illustrations that I've grown up with, like the Berenstain Bears, like that's a, probably a big influence to me in like how to illustrate a book. And I guess um, even I think at the beginning, like you said, you didn't have the landscape and mm -hmm. stuff, but like I was thinking about it as, okay, well, like if it was a Berenstain Bear book, how would they lay things out? Mm -hmm. Or So I kind of, not knowing what I was doing, I guess kind of subconsciously kind of used Berenstain Bears right. as a big influence on yeah. how you would put together. Which, which is funny because that's exactly, I had to Google it. Yeah. Like I didn't, like how many pages are right. in a children's book? It's yeah. been a long time since I looked it's, at a children's book and, and I, I went to the Bernstein Bears. Yeah. Like that was... So you know, that's the go to. Yeah. So that's that's um, yeah. So that's mm -hmm. kind of the process is just, you know, they would send me what they wanted and I would try to draw it and um, I would try to touch base and like send them. OK, well, here, how does this look? And if they wanted anything changed, um, they would tell me like before I did the final um, coloring and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so the that process is still pretty much the same for the book that we're working on right now. So. That's it. So that, that's what Okay, so now let me share the screen again. Let me see if I can do this a little <laughs> bit um, more smoothly. No, I can't. Uh, okay, wait a minute. I think I know what I have to do. 
Sorry, this is exactly how I've taught all last semester and nothing ever. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to reduce my, like, I'm trying to, I have to reduce, okay, wait, there it is. Okay. <laughs> okay, there it is. Gotcha. It was easier than I thought. All right. So then here is the first, one of the illustrations that uh, Anastasia sent me uh, that I could put, oh, wait a minute, I want to go back. Um, so I'll just say from my standpoint of view, you know, uh, the, the colors are so vibrant, so attractive to children. And then when they read the text that is so closely linked, you know, it, they could all, a, a small child, I think, could probably read the book just by looking at the pictures mm -hmm. and know that story sort of by heart. So, okay, then the other illustration that she sent me was this one with the family. So we have Jeeves and Jenny, and then we have the, you know, the family in the new carriage going along for a ride. And so uh, I just wanted to let everybody see the product, you know, of the, the illustration. And I had shown you a sample of the writing as well even though we didn't talk so much about the, um, we didn't talk so much about the, the text itself, but just the simplicity of it, because of course it's a children's book. And so now I'm back to you guys again. Um, so I just think that to, for, again, from an outsider's point of view, putting it all together, making it work, I realized there had to be a lot of collaboration between you and I think both of you are very talented and you almost kind of read each other's minds about, you know, after you talked about it a bit, I'm imagining that you read each other's minds a little bit and just kind of came up with things that each other liked. And I don't know how, how much tweaking did go on. Actually not. I mean, she, once I sent her the, I almost said script, but you know what I mean? Once I sent yeah. her like the, <laughs> the pages, because Anastasia does, uh, she does lights at um, little theater sometimes. So I knew her from there and a couple other people at Reeves knew her from there. And we were kind of, when we were kicking around, you know, who are we going to get to illustrate it and all that. Um, her name came up because she does these adorable illustrations for whenever she does, she works with a cast. She does illustrations of the cast and the crew and, and different people. And, um, and she had done one when we did work on Charlotte's Web and she did a picture of my husband and I working on the set. And it is the cutest thing. Their little faces are just adorable. Um, and Libby who um, works at Reeves, um, she is the one, she's like, well, what about you know, Anastasia? She does this. And I was like, oh my gosh. And from that moment, like there's, there's nobody else that can do these because once she sent us that first picture, we were like, yep, yeah, that's it. So if she ever, like you, you are, con you can't ever not do them. You know okay. that, right? Okay. Right. Like, yeah. Like <laughs> when we were in the second book, I think Sheila was like, so well, Anastasia, I'm like, I, she better. Cause if not, <laughs> we're done. We're not writing anymore. If she can't illustrate them because it's such a, you know, it's, it's just, they're unique. There's nobody else. No other children's book have that it's just a different look, you know yeah, what I mean? They're yeah. just, they're lovely. And those books have gone all over. The, I know, because we have my family, I have grandkids in Wales and there are there are many copies of that book oh, nice. in Wales. So it's an international seller. Yeah. So <laughs> that's awesome. I'm going to talk to you that. Yeah. yeah, you are. National <laughs> author and illustrator. Yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah. I think the other thing is too that, like I have read for the story time over in the children's department at the library. And I, always really try to mention not only the author but the illustrator because it's such an important part oh, it is. of yeah. children's books any book but especially children's books because if you don't nail that and really have that connection and that style and a consistent style which obviously Anastasia has been able to produce right. you know it doesn't have the same impact that you know those characters come alive mm -hmm. even though yeah, and we animated, remember, you know, we remember books from our childhood, mm -hmm. but, you know, when you think back to the books that stick with you from that far back, when you're, you're first reading and first or having books read to you, you know, Beatrix Potter, that sticks in your head and it sticks in your head because of the illustrations. I mean, they're beautifully written and the words are amazing. They're great stories, but it's the illustrations when you're a child that you, 
you instantly, that's right. what you recall. Right. So illustrations are, I think, more important really than the words because that's what that child's gonna think about, really. So, and when people in the area are reading them, um, I talked to the man who owns the, um, the new bookstore down, Bibliophile. the Bibliophile down downtown, and he said he was reading it to his daughter, I think mm -hmm. it was, and, uh, and he's like, oh, well, yeah, we need to get over and see the house. We need to come yeah. over and visit. So, so I know that, I mean, this collaboration is great and it works and it's because of stuff like that, where right. someone locally is now reading it to their kids and they're like, well, let's go see the house, you know, and let's go see where Jeeves stall is. So kind of neat. Maybe something like that would get them interested in seeing more of local history right. and the things that we have around. So that's yeah, cool exactly, too. Yeah. Well, and that's what is such an important part of what you guys do at what, what the staff does at the Reeves Museum, the Reeves home, because it's been sitting there. I wasn't in that home until I was an adult. And so it is so great that a lot of the programming and this co book collaboration is geared at younger children because those are the people who are going to carry the torch for history later. And the more fun we can make it, and the more accessible we can make it, then the better, the, the more children will enjoy it and they won't balk at the word history because they've right. already been exposed to it and thought it was interesting and attractive. So yeah. yeah that's it, making yeah. it interesting. Yeah. That's that's the key, making them want to be, because it's right. has to be fun. I mean, yeah. I'm sure we all had history classes where they were just, you know. Yes. This and. Mm -hmm. I think I'm not a huge American history fan. And I think that's the reason I had American history teachers or classes that were just so boring and dry that, you know, you don't really want to go out and <laughs> open a <laughs> history book. Right. Um, but then I had other classes that were amazing that yeah. made you want to do more. So. Right. So then, okay. So then you have the text written and you probably sighed a sigh of relief. And yeah. then Anastasia did the uh, the illustrations, and she probably sighed a sigh of relief when she was done. A sat a, both of you, a satisfaction, you know, probably you felt the great satisfaction in completing that. But then it's not done. No. What were the next steps? So the again, because I have no experience in in publishing at all, and certainly not in publishing a children's book. Um, and we, we're not doing it, this is not done in a traditional way either. We're not looking to send it to, you know, a big publisher, like a, a major publishing house and get it like reviewed and published and all of that. We knew from the beginning, this was going to be kind of not an in-house project, but a small, a small publisher. We just wanted to print ones that we could sell copies in our gift shop and, and get them out to local, local people, that sort of thing. Um, <clears throat> so looking for a publisher was willing to take on a small project um, and not charge us an arm and a leg, we found to be, I mean, that that took longer, I think, than the illustrating and the writing. We, this was the easy part, like actually doing it, but finding someone who was willing to, um, you know, not, as a nonprofit, we're very careful about our money. And uh, the quotes we were getting were ridiculous, like huge amounts of money. And of course we went locally first and it was just um, unfortunately, and, and thinking that local local people would be better because we wouldn't have shipping and we wouldn't have this or that. Um, it, that was not the case, unfortunately. Um, we just, we couldn't afford to do it locally. So strangely enough, we get a lot of emails about um, like pub, what do you call it? Public publicity material, or like um, buy pens with your name on it from this company, or you know buy bags with your name on it, advertising stuff, kind of stuff, pens and pencils and what have you. And a company out of the blue had sent an email to Sheila Prumi, the director, and it said, you know, here, you know, here's all this information about pens that you can buy with the the Reeves logo on it. Oh, and we also do publishing. There's like a little line at the bottom of it that said we also publish things. Um, and she passed it on to me. She's like, I have no idea. Have a look, see, see what they say. Um, so this wonderful man named David Mulder from a, a company in, I think I wrote it down somewhere, a company um, called Impact Printing. And they're in Beaverton, Oregon, of all places. Um, I don't even know, I have no idea where that is. It's in Oregon. 
Um, so I contacted him and they were super helpful and very willing to help out and helped us with layout and uh, for the price that we paid, which um, I think we ended up, I think maybe 500 total. Um, and that was for 100 copies of the book, help with layout. Um, because once you do it, you still have to, like they have to take it and put it into a form that they can then use for printing. So, you know, this is not it. It doesn't just go into a printer from what I send them. Um, and then there's the back and forth with, here's what it's gonna look like. Then we needed to edit it and we needed to proofread it and send it back. And um, after the first book, we we made some changes for the second one. So we've gotten smarter. We know a little bit more what we need to do to make it look more like, you know, a real, right. like a real children's book. Um, so we're getting, we're getting a little, we're learning. Yeah. It's an education, I think, for all of us. Yeah. So when Anastasia branches out and starts publishing her own children's books, she'll, well, maybe this will help her as well. Right. Um, but yeah, that was, the, that was the hard part was finding someone, because uh, like I said, I mean, we're a nonprofit. We don't have, we don't have a lot of money um, to do this. And we didn't really, I mean, we thought about maybe getting, you know, we could approach people for donations and sponsorship and all of that, but we just really wanted to get it done. And I think it had kind of gotten to a point where we were just like, well, I'm just, I'm gonna go, I don't know, sell a cat or something. Like I paid for this, I'm done with this. Like we've got to do this, you know? Um, but then this guy fell into our lap basically and it was wonderful. Yeah, I can only imagine when you saw that little line on the publicity, it said, we also do publishing that, oh, uh, who knows? But yeah. it's a good thing you followed up because that was so that was such an important key. So yeah. then obviously I can see you sent the text. How did the illustrations get there, Anastasia? I gave them to her and she passed them on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She so she would do she does the, the actual illustrations as a marker and mm -hmm. pen. colored pencil. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then she brought them over to the office and we would scan them in. And I think we scanned them into like a PDF file. I don't know anything mm -hmm. about technology, which makes it also interesting because we're all like technologically impaired, yep. to be honest. <laughs> so, so that made it even more fun because the publishers like sent it in this format. I'm like, dude, I don't even know what you're talking about, but okay, I'm going to Google that. Um, but yeah, so luckily we worked it all through, you know, we would scan it, turn it into a PDF file. Then we attached it to the Word document and then all of the PDF files of the, the scanned um, pages. And, uh, and then I just sent them off to him and he worked his magic. Yeah. Because at the point when you sent things off, you know, when you were looking at a price, you didn't really know how successful it was going to be yeah. and if people would buy the book to cover the cost. But... Right. That's where I think people at the Reeves home, you know, you guys did a great job at marketing and you can, can you tell us about some of the activities that you've done with Jeeves, with children, obviously prior to the pandemic, that right. would, where the children had a chance to meet Jeeves in person and become excited about that whole, the existence of that book. Well, we have, um, we always do the Patriot Rally. At, they usually do it at the mall. Um, so Jeeves shows up there. And right after we got the book published, that was the, um, I think that might've been the first place that we actually had the book physically. Um, so we had it there. Uh, we do a Jeeves Jammy Jam, which is an overnight, not, not an overnight, let me clarify that. That is not an overnight stay for the children. <laughs> that would be crazy. Um, but they bring, the children come to the, um, to the carriage house and then we take them into the house and they bring a, a stuffed animal or a, um, a doll or something, one of their friends. And then their stuffed animal, their friend, stays overnight at the Reeves house. Um, it's, it's so much fun. We have, we have a blast with that. Um, so then the kids then leave and then we take their stuffed animals and the stuffed animals run through the house and do things all over the house. You know, they play in the kitchen or they jump on the beds and uh, we have such a good time. Um, but Jeeves is involved with that. So Jeeves, um, Jeeves reads to them, or he tries to read to them. He's not real good at reading. He doesn't talk much. So we read and he kind of like does his thing. Um, but so we, we use him for that. We have history camp, not last year, obviously, but this year we've got history camp coming up. So Jeeves 
we'll show up at the history camp and uh, and we will, even though we won't have the book, the book won't be ready by June and it won't be published certainly anywhere close to that. Um, but we'll probably read the book at, at that meet as that first, um, because the first day of history camp, we're talking about Wales and the Reeves family. Um, and because Jeeves and Dylan are going to, Dylan the dragon is taking him around Reeves or taking him around Wales. Um, we'll talk about that on the first day of history camp and we'll probably read the book as it's written and um, maybe talk a little bit about it and show whatever Anastasia, she has a couple illustrations ready, which she's shown us a couple already in there. Adorable. Um, <laughs> talk about that on the first day. That right. Your question at all? Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. So then, so from, so people who are listening to this um, program might be interested in doing a small publication like that. So from the beginning, the ideation of the book through the process of writing, illustrating, and finally publishing and getting the books in your hands, how long did that take? How long did it take you to write the book? Right, writing the book probably didn't take I mean, the, the writing part of it didn't take that long. And then I'm sure the illustrating took longer than it took to write it, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure. Um, honestly, I think the, the largest amount of time, the biggest time spent on that first book was trying to figure out, you know, what format do we wanna use? How big does the book need to be? Um, and that really, honestly, that was a lot of Google searches, like, like a dumb Google search for me, like, how many pages does a children's book have? Because there really is, there is a limit. Like there are very defined rules about writing children's books, you know, it, for writing a novel, like it should have this many pages or this many chapters. Like there are actually, you don't think there are rules, but there are definite, there are definite rules about it. So I think we ended up, I can't remember how many pages we ended up. It was a little fudged. It wasn't perfect, but somewhere between like 36 and 42 for a children's book. So yeah, there's a lot of like nitpicky stuff that go into it, um, especially the first time you do it. So the, the, the big amount of time and it probably, I, I guess maybe start to finish had to be at least a year, maybe. But a lot of that, again, most of that was trying to figure out who a publisher was gonna be, um, wading through just the logistics of that, contacting people to find out who they used or what they used. and finding out how expensive it was a couple of times and going, all right, well, maybe we need to wait just because this is not. Um, yeah, but at the end, like again, once that email with this guy and that first quote came back, it was like, <laughs> we're good. Um, right. So the second, the second book is because all of that's already, we already know what we're doing. We've done it that first time. It's now we know. Um, but really it was the research of just trying to figure out how to do it, having never ever done it before. Um, that was a fun part. But the nice thing though about, um, you know, years ago, a lot of, when I was in um, like in grad school, a lot of people were publishing, the whole publication process is difficult, getting, you know, getting to a real, a real publisher, but getting to like a, a big publishing house, that's a whole nother process. Um, what they used to call it, like vanity press, if you publish your own book and you pay for it, it's a different thing. Um, anybody will publish anything that you write because they will, um, if you do it your own private publishing like we did. Uh, there's so many more people doing that and there there's so many more publishing houses that'll do that, um, so many ways to do it. And it's not just, like this was a project that we wanted to do and get into our, into our gift shop. Um, so it had to look, pretty professional, I would think, you know, we didn't right. want it to look like we just stapled pages together, you know. Um, so we, we were definitely looking for something a little bit on the, you know, not the high end hardcover $8 million thing, but but still presentable, like, a, like you would see at the library, like our book would fit fine at our library, that would be good. Um, and we have it. Yes, you do there. <laughs> yes. Um, well, that experience that you're sharing is so valuable to other people, because you spend a lot of time putting those pieces together, finding the publisher mm -hmm. and, and all that. Now that serves as a stepping stone for somebody else. Yes. Because just like you went and found other children's books and looked at the illustrations mm -hmm. and looked at the length and the page, 
all of that, you know, and I imagine like the vocabulary level, all of those things are things that maybe somebody who has a book way back in their mind, maybe they haven't really thought it through. And this will be a great um, tool for them to use to get their publishing on the way. So now when you say you talked about vanity publishing, I've noticed that in many of the book clubs, um, people start out their first book is like a memoir. So they're writing about something that they know. Right. And then most of the ones I've been reading have been things that they have connected with a, a, a larger publishing house, which is great. But let's turn the conversation a little bit to what if you have a project like a family project mm -hmm. that doesn't need to be out there for everybody it's not going to be for sale in a gift shop but it is something that family members uh, could in invest their time and energy in and um how how would you suggest what suggestions would you have for people who have that idea of recording something in history in their own family and then getting it out there to the people in the family is that a connection we can make? Yeah, absolutely. And we were, uh, again, Sheila and I, we've been talking about this. Um, again, because family reunions are actually might happen this summer. Uh, lot, you know, you have lots of kids at these gatherings. Um, putting together a book for whatever. I mean, it could be just a children's story like ours, not really related, maybe related to the family. If you have someone in your family who likes to write, they could write a quick little story and I would suggest doing it like I did the second time where you, you know, write the words at the bottom of the page, leave a great big blank space, right? Easy enough to have someone, it might be an adult or a grandparent, write out a little story and then just hand those pages off to the grandkids or the other kids at the event. Or maybe they want to write, you know, I mean, it could very well be the, you know, the grandparent's story. You know, there are so many interesting family stories, you know, where... You go back, most families in this area, you go back five generations, we're not from here. You know, they come from other places and that's something that needs to be passed on. Um, family stories are as important as uh, the Reeves family, the Reeves Museum. Our story is a family story. It's a story about a family who came here from another country and did something really good. Um, that's the, any families like that. So, you don't need a publisher for that. You don't need to go to the extent that we did, obviously, you know, right. out there, get the kids working on it. And then either they can just take that home with them. Or if you want to have fun, you know, pass it out, let them do it, compile it, and then head off to Staples or your own printer at home and make your own copies kind of thing. Yes. Right. And now that and now that we know technology is on our side, it is always great to have the book in our hands. But when you have a project like that, where let's say you're at a place and you have kids and they pick up a sheet of paper that has a prompt at the bottom yeah. and they draw or paint or whatever medium, you know, is there available to them. Mm -hmm. You you could actually it's just so easy to compile something on the computer and send that out to people in digital form now. Exactly. Although, I like to have the book in my hands, but sometimes it's just easier. I know that I know a family whose father wrote a book and they, for years, they tried to get that book reprinted mm -hmm. and it took so long. They wanted an actual physical book mm -hmm. and it took them so long that I think they only managed to find someone for the cost to do like 10 copies. Wow. And it was so sad because if, if we, I know that's important, but more important is to preserve that work that he wrote. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that every member in the family or other people can read it because it was, it was really a great book and, and so few people had a chance to access it. So I think technology can be our friend if Absolutely. we, yeah. if we have people who help us do that. Or being able to share it with people, you know, in other in other countries. A lot of us, I, I mean, our family especially, we've got I've got grandkids in in Wales. So, being able to use technology to send something back and forth. I mean, when every time Anastasia would send me a picture of what she was working on, one of the um, I'm constantly sharing it with my my daughter and my grandkids over there. Like, oh my gosh, look what Jeeves looks like now, you know. <laughs> 
So it's nice to, um, cause they have, they actually have one of the stuffed Jeeves. So, so they, <laughs> like my youngest, I think he's five over there. So the book and the stuffies come out and they're, you know, yeah, they love it. So. And do the adults who see those pictures uh, from Wales, do they ever give you some feedback about well, they've, they've been over here and they've seen the house. So oh. they love that it's someplace that they've been for sure. They also think, um, and I, I know I've said that before, I've said it before, but Mr. Reeves in the book looks like my husband, I think. So it's kind of funny because they identify Mr. Reeves with granddad now. <laughs> so, yeah. So they do get, they do give feedback. Yeah, for sure. Good feedback. That's awesome. Yeah. They love the pictures. So. Well, and look at the history not just the history of the Reeves family here, but the Reeves family in Wales. Yeah. yeah. So it's a, it, it reaches far beyond what we have here in Dover, Ohio. And, right. and I think that opens people's imaginations. You know, I know that people sometimes go and look for their ancestors and go try to find relatives in places where they came from or look up their genealogy tree. Uh, but what a great way to preserve it and to even like uh, encourage people to do that. Yeah. Knowing yeah. that you could put together a book, it doesn't have to be professional looking like you say, but just something that, you know, because if you put out at a family reunion, um, like I think Pam, one time you said to me, uh, put it out at a family reunion and just put like the person's name, like everybody's name in the family, put them on a, their name on a bottom of a piece of paper. Yeah. And then kids could take it and draw that person and oh sign God. that. That that's such a hilarious. That could be such a, a dear and treasured thing mm -hmm. because it's that person through the eyes of a child or different people of different ages. It can be. It can engage everybody. So really and awesome. The, the internet is such an amazing resource for you know if you're looking up your genealogy where are you from your know, ancestry and all that and the dna test we can take to figure out where we literally are exactly from but then when you go online and you you know just a simple google of you know looking for with the reese family where they were born and then finding places for the book you know a castle that's nearby so you know jane when she was a little girl very much would have seen this castle um, you know, Jeremiah would have seen this um, particular thing. And there are a lot of things that, there are some things I put in only because I really like them. When we go <laughs> certain places that I always go to, so I'm like, all right, that's going in the book because that's fun. Um, yeah, it, it's, and I think also because we're tar targeting young, a young group of children, helping them see that, again, this is a family who came from another country. So this is the, you know, an immigrant family who came to the US and did these really cool things, but never forgot where they came from. And that's, that's great. And that's how it should be. So I think, I think that's important too. Do you know what I mean? Like fostering yeah. this, this idea that, you know, I don't know, sometimes, it, sometimes that's difficult to, to get. Although I don't think, so. I mean, children are so accepting, really. I always better than adults. I always think about that old um, schoolhouse rock song. Mm -hmm. I think it was called the Great American Melting Pot, mm -hmm. and like yeah. it would show little kids, and they were talking about like where their ancestors came from and how they yeah. were proud to be from somewhere else, but also proud to be American. Right. And yeah. so that's yeah, that idea kind of is yeah. yeah. So I, I'm super excited about the fact that, and I, I'm always you know always talking about that, you know, this is a family who wasn't from here, but came here and did this, did amazing things for our area. And, and, you know, through what they started, still continue to do great things through the, the Reeves Foundation and, and things like that, you know, um, I think that, the, that theme is, that theme is also so current. Yes. People yeah. coming, people coming with an identity already established yeah. to a new place forming a new I don't want to say yeah. a totally new identity but right. being uh, you know making adjustments to right. fit in and to not lose their their culture but fit into this yeah. new place where they are yeah. and uh everybody who reads the book or who thinks about that kind of thing also you know we are I guess in this stage we are making history 
-hmm. in our, you know, as we live and we sometimes we think of history as something that happened in the past, but there, right. yeah. there are, it happens now, it's happening now. It just takes yeah. a while for it to be the past in yeah. it, really. Um, nice to start that conversation, I think. Yeah, I mean, doing it through a children's book with illustrations and showing them in a fun way that um, you can start that conversation about, you know, people come from other countries and, and they, you know, they come here and they, they do things. We need to accept that they're bringing wonderful things from their countries too and, and valuable things and things that are interesting um, while they're trying to fit in and make friends, find out what, what's interesting about where they come from, you know? Mm -hmm. There's a lot yeah. of stuff out there. Anastasia, when you were drawing, did you have any particular, you know, sometimes how people hide little things in their each of their drawings to sort of uh, say, oh, this is my drawing and I can prove it because there's that little detail here? Or did you have a favorite character while you were drawing? Did one of the characters seem more difficult to capture than another? <laughs> Um, well, I had to do a crash test in learning to draw horses because <laughs> horses are really hard to draw. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, that's still a learning curve. Um, I don't think I hid anything in the book. I don't know if I even like put my signature on any of the pages. Like I just figured, well, I know I did it and they know I did it and, well, and that, that's good enough. So <laughs> that, again, that's, that's the thing about the way it looks like I could, and you, you know, because you're involved with little theater, if I took that book over there and just laid it out oh. with names on it, everybody would be like, oh my gosh, Anastasia did this. <laughs> right. Such a distinct look. Like it is, there's no place, no place else have I seen that kind of look, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's awesome. I think that's, that's just awesome being a, especially because local people, there are so many local people who have seen her work, mm -hmm. who know it. So she's like Cher, she doesn't need a last name. She's just <laughs> Anastasia with okay. her wonderful. Well, <laughs> no, there's not many of those around that here. Is, that is true, yeah. <laughs> the, the great illustrations. Okay, well, um, does anybody that's Zooming on have a comment or a question that you'd like to ask us? You can unmute yourself and ask it. Okay, so I don't see anything in the chat and I don't think uh, there's a question, but I certainly appreciate um, the work that you've put into this. And I hope that it's been as rewarding for you as it has been for the people who look at the book and and really take the time to realize how much work it was. And I'm looking forward to the, the second book coming out because that shouldn't be too long. We shouldn't be waiting that long for it. So I'll be looking for that at the library. And I'm hoping people will say maybe this summer or maybe during the dark days of winter mm -hmm. that they would maybe sit down and try to make a family book of some sort. It doesn't have to be a history. It can be you know, your favorite Christmas or what do we do at certain times? I don't know. I'm just thinking that there's a lot of opportunity and the title of the program is Making History Accessible Through Storytelling. And you pointed out that everybody has a story to tell and all stories are important and we can learn from everybody's story and that's a beautiful thing. So I wanna thank everybody for attending and I especially want to thank uh, Tamara Benson and um, now Tamara, did I say, have I been saying your name wrong this whole time? Nope, you're it. My mom says Tamara, that's fine. George calls okay. me Tamara, so I, okay. I'm happy. Well, okay. Anything at all. <laughs> so Tamara Benson and Anastasia Merritt, the author and the illustrator respectively of the book called The New Carriage. And what's the title of the second book coming out? Uh, Jeeves Grand Adventure. Jeeves Grand Adventure. Okay. And we know he's <laughs> yeah. And we, and we <laughs> is that what you decided on? <laughs> I think that's what we have on the front page. So yeah, I just on the script. That's so. what we're going with. Yeah. Okay. All right. And it will be grand because he's going to make yeah. new friends in yeah. Wales and we'll learn about that and it'll be exciting. So it'll be fun. All right. Oh. And you've already mentioned that the uh, history camp is coming up. Mm -hmm. And people should go to the Reeves Home uh, website and look for other events that are coming up at the Reeves Home. And you don't have to have an event just to go over and go through the house and tour it. Oh, 
we we open June second um, for tours, and uh, and Clue is the the first event. We're finally finally gearing up our events, and Clue is that first weekend. So great. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, ladies, so much. Thanks everybody for tuning in, and um, we'll see you the next time at the Dover Public Library for another great program. All right. Thanks, ladies. Thanks. Bye. Bye.